Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us in the middle of the day today. And also for those of you, we know that there were a number of requests for people that we are recording the video because they could not make it. Um, Jericho's just adjusting his camera, so he looks very handsome. <laughs> not sure about that. Can't do that. <laughs> Camera's not going to fix that. <laughs> all good, all good. Well, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. We're joined by Jer Jerko Zuela of Ragusa Minerals. And for those of you that don't know Jerko, and he'll go into his story, he is also a highly, highly experienced uh, director, been involved in the mining space for a very long time, connected with a number of other businesses as well. But what we thought was really interesting, Jerko, specifically with Ragusa, is that you're both an offensive and defensive company. You have a number of projects on the move which we think is very attractive, especially because certainly we're cognizant, markets have changed a lot. So diversity is certainly helping. Um, you're in the lithium space, in the battery metal space, as well as gold. But before we get into the projects, Jerko, maybe just give us a few seconds about your background. How did you get to where you are today? Yeah, uh, thanks very much for that introduction. Very generous and very kind. I'm not quite sure if it's all true, but uh, yeah, I'll take it all uh, today. Thank you very much. And thanks for everyone to, to join this uh, this webinar today as well. I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about Ragusa Minerals. I'm quite excited about uh, what we've got coming up. And uh, yeah, I guess my background, geologist, uh, born and bred here in Perth, uh, worked all around the world, uh, from Africa to Asia, North America, South America, obviously here in Australia, uh, seen a lot of things. And uh, hopefully, you know, I feel anyway that, um, you know, that's what you need, uh, that sort of background and experience to, you know, take a junior company, hopefully from somewhere, you know, starting off to, to hopefully something that's uh, a lot more valuable and a lot more uh, uh, lucrative for, for shareholders to, to be interested in. So geologist uh, got involved with Ragusa back, we effectively did a, a reverse takeover uh, of the uh, of the company back in, uh, when was it, 2020? Uh, I think we sort of uh, re ipo effectively on the 1st of October 2020, um, supported by some, you know, some good, uh, some good groups that participated in there. Obviously, it's been a little bit of a slow, slow start to life uh, for Ragusa. But again, like you said, we've got, you know, we've built up the project portfolio, uh, built up a you know, variety of commodities that, that we're looking at. Obviously, lithium and, and given my background as managing director of Argosy Minerals, um, you know, we know all about lithium. Uh, and in my role as chairman, obviously, we've looked at some opportunities there. We've been able to, you know, sort of pick up a couple of small tenements up in the NT with lithium. But, you know, we've, we've tried to build up that portfolio, like you said, to cover a, a broad spectrum of commodities. You know, we're very excited about our Alaskan project with gold and, and probably, you know, multi-element up there as well. You know, it's very exciting, very prospective. And um, obviously, the, the WA project with, with Halloy site, again, like you said, it's a, effectively a battery mineral as well. So a little bit excited there. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of my background, and, and I won't sort of steal too much of the funder of the project, because I'm sure we'll talk about that coming up. And just before we go into, into the projects and all that, can you just talk about your top 20? Like, um, I've noticed a few pretty, there's a few big hitters on there. Are they, um, like, how long have they been in, and do they buy on market and support you guys? Yeah, listen, obviously, um, you know, we had to do an IPO where we raised, I think it was $5 million. So uh, we had some great support from our from our brokers. And I know Peter's listening today. So uh, Vert Capital did a great job with, with that and uh, some of their supporters. Um, so, you know, the main shareholders are probably related to some of those groups, um, you know, and, and Peter and the team at Vert have been very supportive on market as well. Um, you know, some of the uh, existing, I guess, uh, vendors, um, uh, I've got large stakes in the business. Obviously, we, we brought in a couple of those assets about a year or so ago as well. So, you know, the top 20 hasn't probably changed too much over the, uh, since we listed, um, relisted back, what, 18 months or so ago now. You know, the main guys are still supporting. The main the main shareholders are, are still in there. Obviously, you know, the, the game wasn't to go from 6 to, to 10 or 12 or 15. It's go from 6 to 60 to potentially $6. And, uh, you know, we think, you know, we've been looking for those assets to, to get there. But... The top 20 has been supportive. Um, you know, we, we had to do a small raise off the back of the two new uh, assets that we acquired last year. Again, uh, the Vert Capital guys and, you know, got the, 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 the main guys back in to, to support us there. And uh, obviously, as we've, as we've developed those couple of new projects, plus the, the new project this year, a little bit more support there as well. So, yeah, listen, can't complain. Um, a good mix in the top 20. Um, you know, a few heavy hitters, you know, uh, some of those Vert guys and, and uh, 
some of their backers that they work closely with, um, all still involved. And uh, like I said, you know, we're, we're looking to to do a more, you know, you know, a multiple of, of where we started from, and that's what they're waiting for, and that's exactly what we're we're trying to do. So you started from the IPO price. What was that? Six cents. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot harder to do now. The ASX try and get everyone a twenty. So twenty. Um, yeah, that's right. Yep, absolutely. And uh, the, I think we got a, a an exemption from that due to whatever it was at the time. But um, yep. yeah, but you know whether it's six to, to sixty or, or twenty cents to two bucks. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference, right? It's just uh, you know protecting a little bit of downside. But you know whether you're starting at six or twenty, no real difference. So, um, but you know again, the game is to to have that multiple of, of what you started from and uh, you know the only way to do that in my mind and the way I run all my companies is you got to have fundamental value and uh, you know we don't do a lot of or haven't had a lot of promotion or, or you know sort of marketing I guess in that regard in terms of retail marketing but um, you know we're, we're you know the way I've built Argosy up I'm looking to build up you know as chairman chairperson um, Ragusa as well and that's off the back of real real projects some real value found in those projects and you know we're thinking in the portfolio at the moment, we, we can do that. And I'm obviously off the back of the new project in the NT with the lithium, you know, given my experience there, I think I can add a lot of value and the company can realize a lot more value from what we're trying to do up in the NT as well. Got it. Hey, Jerko, before we turn to the lithium, if we can start out though, maybe with Halosite. Uh, for people that don't know, can you just explain its uses, why it is a, a, a material of the future? And then maybe we can get into the project itself. Oh yeah, uh, you needed to give me a bit of heads up on that one. Um, oh, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. Obviously, uh, it's got multi uses in capacitators and and conductors and, and things like that. So again, all about electronics. Um, you know, the higher the the, the purity of halosite, the the you know the more uh, high usage or value that you can derive from from that product. Um, but at the same time, you know, a bit like the the um, the HPA and even sort of the, the lithium, I guess you, you do need a lot of um, chemical understanding of how to process that. What we're looking for at the Borough Coppin project is probably not going down that angle. It's more probably a, a DSO type uh, operation we're looking at right. where you know, it's, it's very shallow. It's in the top 30 meters of, 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 of uh, the soil. Uh, it's very easy to drill out, very easy to find. Obviously, uh, you know, you need to put a mine plan together to identify the halosite versus the kaolin. But, you know, the strategy is to try to identify that effectively, you know, go through the, uh, uh, I guess, an expedited approvals process and put it on a ship and, and send it to those groups that can process it. You know, we, we don't want to be a technology company, I guess, given our other assets. Uh, we're very much keen to provide the raw material and uh, give it to the experts to do what they need to do with it to get it to the stage where it goes into those electronics and, uh, you know, battery sort of components and, and things like that. But uh, that, that's the strategy for, for that project. And, and really, we think it's a, a very low capex, low opex opportunity and uh, try to realize some, some value out of the project and, and get a bit of revenues through the door if we, if we can get into production. Yeah, and speaking of you know, getting into production, can you just give us a timeline, ideally, what should we look for over the next call, you know, 12 to 24 months? Yep, so we've just finished our, our maiden drilling campaign. Um, so we're just working on getting those uh, selected samples into the laboratory and, and get the results. So um, you know we've done a little bit of back of the envelope off, off the, off the uh, geological logs and so forth. So we're, we're very excited what they may hold. We think based on uh, that preliminary sort of knowledge from the drilling that, you know, that, that sort of development pathway is more than achievable. But in terms of over the next couple of years at the project, very much getting those samples into the lab, getting the results back, proving up a resource, you know, out outlining a, a jork resource. And then off the back of that, the development strategy, which again, you need to sort of convert that exploration license into a mining license. So you've got to go through the regulatory process. Um, so over the next couple of years, we'd love to be in a position where you know, we're not far off uh, getting those permits and uh, and uh, getting into the ground. And like I said, you're, you're effectively like a little sand quarry operation and we can get into, into operations and, and hopefully through some of the connections that we've got, we can find some very good uh, potential customers, um, whether it's in Asia or, or elsewhere. Uh, again, through the connections that we've got, we think we'll be able to sell the product and there's, there's groups out there that are interested. So it's just making sure we can, we can follow our, our, our pathway and uh, do what we say we're going to do, and and get that into production as quickly as possible. Yeah, and also, Jerko, you know, you're right near Latin Resources, uh, the company as well. For those of you that don't know, their success over the call the last twelve months does that give you more confidence in what you're looking at on your project? Oh, uh, listen, the reason why I guess um, we found that project was because it was next door to Latin's project. We found the the vendor, 
we're happy to do, you know, we, we think we've picked it up very cheaply. And, um, you know, when, when you've got a neighbor that's drilled right to your boundary and they're finding resource there, it gives you a lot of confidence that you're going to find something. And, and like I said, the drilling campaign that we did uh, last month, you know, validates that methodology, that strategy. And uh, like I said, over, over the coming months, we expect to be able to show to our shareholders uh, exactly those results. And, and that will prove up, you know, exactly what's next door that, you know, we, we won't be, be far off with what we've got as well. Right. And, you know, you, as I said earlier, you're a multi-project company. Uh, in any particular order that you would want to go, you obviously have, you know, three other projects on the move. Would you like to discuss them either Monte Cristo or in Zimbabwe or your, you know, most recently in the Northern Territory, the lithium, whatever you, you select? Yeah, listen, obviously lithium's for probably the, the key, key product or key uh, commodity uh, of interest in the market at the moment, given the, the, the buzz around EVs and what we're seeing around the world in, in that regard. So that's probably going to become our, our primary project. Obviously, we've only got a small land holding at the moment, but we're very, working very hard as we put in our announcement that we'll look to uh, increase that land holding up in the NT. You know, we've seen the success of Core Lithium up there. Lithium Plus, a recent uh, IPO, uh, has been very well received by the market, albeit, I guess, you know, everyone struggled in the last couple of weeks with this market too. Yeah, but, you know, there's a lot of value. Uh, and given that the proximity to, to Darwin Port, you're not far away, you know, 80 to 100 kilometres away, none of the the West Australian lithium spodumene projects, you know, are that close to, to port. So again, you've got some favourable um, economic outcomes there. Your Darwin's closer to the Asian markets as well for that. So again, you should be very competitive in terms of cost for producing the, the spodumene. And again, just like, you know, Pilbara, just like Core, just like, you know, those guys that are producing lithium in, in Northern WA or, or in NT, um, you know, it's going to be, we think, a very uh, favourable project for us to, to look to, to get in production. So early stage for us at this stage, given that, you know, the, the three tenements we've got are in application stage. Like I said, we're working on some additional uh, tenements to, to, to pick up. Uh, we're working on that currently. Hopefully that's not too far off as, as we've announced in our, in our uh, or put in our announcements. So again, we think we'll, we'll have something comparable to, to to um, Core Lithium and, and Lithium Plus. And, you know, from where they are at, you know, especially Core and, and even, even Lithium Plus, that's very much a large multiple of where we're at at the moment. So, uh, you know, we're very much looking to follow down that path and, and show some real value in the Lithium. And then, like you said, uh, the Alaskan project, you know, potentially gold plus, you know, potential multi-commodity. Multi we're very excited by that. Our, our, our consultants um, have got a, you know, we've been hunting around for historical data that we're getting our hands on. And that's very prospective. Obviously, our neighbours up there are Nova Minerals and Gold Mining Inc. They've established some very large resources. I think Nova Minerals has got over 9 million ounces of gold that they've uh, uh, proved up. Uh, gold Mining Inc. has got probably over 5 million ounces. So again, the geology is very similar to, to what those guys have got. Uh, our consultants are, are very excited. We're, we're going to be doing uh, some works there this summer, uh, hopefully be able to fast track what we've got up there. Um, but, you know, obviously the, the, the strategy up there, like the others, is, is build up a a large inventory of, of uh, gold resources and then look at the development options down the track. Obviously, Alaska is a little bit more restrictive in terms of when you can get out there and do work, given I was you know, ask during you. the winter is a little bit tricky. Now, we know the Nova guys pretty well. They are able to work some parts of their project where it's a bit lower down or in the valleys uh, more often. But, you know, when you are up in the mountains and up in the peaks, you know, you are a bit restricted to the summer field season. So, you know, things won't move as fast there. But like I said, we've got access to a lot of information which might be able to help us um, do things during the off season as well uh, and complement what we need to do on the field uh, this summer and, and in future summers. But, you know, that's probably a little bit more of a, a long or medium term proposition, but we're very excited and our consultants are very excited that, you know, we'll probably find something pretty reasonable up there and, and, and hopefully add a lot of value to the business as well. And, and we can then work out what, what, the, what the pathway for that is, whether it's a standalone sort of uh, project in a new company uh, that we sort of look to, to, to do, or, um, or carries on in the business, uh, you know, off the back of potential, you know, whether it's cash flows from Barra Coppin or some real value add from, from the Northern Territory Lithium, but um, something we want to add a lot of value to as well over the next couple of years. Right. So when you think about the company, it sounds like you definitely think about it on a holistic level. You just mentioned about taking the cash flow from one project, trying to apply it towards the exploration of another. Is that the way you've always gone about with all your businesses? Oh, listen, cash flow is always good. Um, you know, it's very hard to do that as a junior company. Sure. The reason why Barra Coppin is, you know, I think a, a real possibility is small capex. You know, opex is reasonable. You don't need to be, a, you know, 
multi hundred million or billion dollar company to get financing to go and build a three, four, five hundred million dollar project like you know whether it's gold or whatever. You know if you if you if your market cap doesn't sustain the the capex requirement, it's going to be very difficult to to develop a project. Whereas this stuff at Barracopin again low intensity, low capital requirement. So you know you can do things as a small company to get into production. So very much holistic, like you said. Um, we think that's very achievable. And then yeah, if we can get some cash flows through the door. Um, you know, it helps us with our other projects, but saying that at the same time, you know, if we can realise some, you know, some true value from our other projects and, you know, get the mark cap to where we think it could get to, you know, raising capital at those high prices is, is not, a, not an issue either, given that, you know, like I said, I think we'll, we'll show some real, some real potential at those projects and, and I'm sure the market would be very pleased with, with what we're, we're working on at the moment and what we hope to be able to achieve over the next, um, you know, period of time. So with all with all that in mind, you currently got a market cap of nine million. Is that right? Yeah, nine million. That's right. And it's three million a little bit in the last couple of days, given the, the market sell off. So probably even less than that. And you got three million in cash still. Yep. So do you think you can use the current projects um, and get away with not doing a capital raise in the next few years and um, just go from there? Or what? What's yeah, listen, maybe not next few years, but I definitely think that $3 million will be able to establish what we need to do up in the Northern Territory and yep. really advance that project to make sure the market fully understands the potential and, you know, the upside, the short-term upside in that. So I think, you know, we'll benefit from, from that with a bit of works up there. You know, our budget up there, you know, it's probably a million to a million and a half over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, so, you know, again, well and truly fits into what we've got and what we need to do. Borough Coppin, again, won't need a lot of a lot of capital to, to get to the stage where, um, you know, we've drilled it out at the moment. Analysis, you know, going through the regulatory process is not that cost uh, intensive. And then Alaska, again, it's, you know, it's expensive to do business up there, you get to rely on helicopters and your remote and, and things like that. So it is a little bit more tricky, but again, some of that historical data that we'd, uh, you know, that we're, we're working on at the moment, um, you know, adds a lot of value as well. So we just need to put that in the market at, at, you know, once we've done a bit of work and understand what we've got and, and show, show the market what the potential there is as well. I think between those two projects and Borough Coppin being advanced, that $3 million takes us a long way over the next 12 to 24 months. And, you know, I'd like to think, you know, at the earlier of that, that sort of 12 month period that, you know, we're not a eight or $9 million company anymore, that, you know, we can really show some some real value. And then off the back of that, whether we raise more money or what happens, um, we'll see. But, you know, $3 million, we're, we're pretty conservative. Um, you know, you'll see our, our expenditures, uh, corporate and overheads in the last few quarterlies, you know, we're, we're not spending a lot of money on there. We're very much, everything's got to go into the ground. We're very uh, fiscally responsible. And, um, you know, we get best bang for buck. And uh, that's exactly what we, we think we can achieve. And off the back of that, you know, we'll have some optionality about, you know, how to bring new funds into the company. Understood. And in the Northern Territory, you're at the application stage. Can you just give us a timing? Uh, you know, I know it's hard to pin down exactly, but just to give us some type of ballpark estimations. Yeah, listen, it's obviously dependent upon if you need to go through the, the native title process. Obviously, um, you know, that, that does slow things down. We're hopeful that, you know, those tenements um, won't be slowed down due to that. So hopefully over the next six months or so, um, we'll make some good headway. Whether we can get it granted by then or not, again, uh, you know, I'm not a, a fortune teller, unfortunately, and, and sometimes that's how it works with, with government agencies, depending on, you know, what's required. But like I said, um, it's not going to be those ones that we'll be solely focused on. Like I said, we're working on some, some new opportunities where, you know, those tenements uh, will allow us access to, to get in and start drilling, you know, very much in the near term. And, and we're going to be definitely targeting the same, same geology, the same... Uh, uh, mineralization uh, like is in our tenements that you know that's that's you know what we're targeting from what's in core and lithium plus as well so we expect like i said to be hitting the ground drilling and proving up resources uh, at our you know future projects that we're looking at um during the course of you know the next 12 months yeah and hopefully by then also all the backlog of workers with COVID and everything is you know and that's right sure. even, even speaking with with people for drilling drill rigs and all that like you said uh, you know and you know, some people don't want to be vaccinated. So there's government mandates where you can't work if you're not vaccinated. So we had to go through that with the borough cop. And obviously we had some COVID issues there as well. Right. You, know, you can't stop that. Um, but, you know, we're very much planning to ensure that we're ready to go as soon as we can. Got it. Hey, Jerko, you know, we want to keep it short before we open it up to questions and answers. Um, do you have any closing remarks? And then we'll open it up. No, listen, uh, you know, again, um, for our uh, Long-term shareholders, obviously, it's probably been a little bit frustrating, but you know we're, we've been very much working behind the scenes to 
to add value to the business, probably taking a little bit longer than we'd all like, but to me, the future is very exciting. Uh, we're going to be, you know, really ramping up over the next six to 12 months. Uh, well, starting from, you know, from the next, well, from today and, and the last couple of weeks. But, you know, I think, you know, we're, we're really, like I said, we're really looking to advance the company, build some real value. And hopefully that is very positive for all our shareholders. Okay. Um, so we're going to open up the floor. So any questions, um, go for it. If you, we've yeah. got something on there. Um and for also you shy people, you can just WhatsApp Sean and I. <laughs> We've seen you've identified pegmatites at dikes at the Lithfield Lithium Project. Can you explain what these are and what the means for the potential value of the project are? Yeah, listen, those are the same pegmatites that are running through the core lithium and the lithium plus tenements. So uh, it's a same, like I said, it's the same geology, the same pegmatites that's running that sort of that general north south direction. We've gone and pegged ground uh, where it was available, uh, filled in a few gaps there. Um, like I said, we've gone and looked for, for other areas that are along those same strikes and same geology. So yeah, we're targeting those same pegmatites that you know Core's built a $2 billion company out of. So you know we're very excited about what's coming up. Uh, looking forward to drilling that, proving up a resource and, uh, and really, yeah, you know, off the back of the interest in lithium at the moment, we think we'll have something very positive to, to share over the short term and, and the medium term as well, once we, we really crack on with the projects uh, to show what we've got. Okay, <clears throat> Jerk, I'm getting another question. Someone's asking me in the Northern Territory, and I don't know if you can answer this or not, how close are you to expanding your foothold with more lithium? Very close, very okay. close. Uh, not far off, like I said, we've been working hard since we pegged that, that ground uh, earlier this year. Again, you, know, you don't get a chance to peg ground very often in very prospective areas. We've done that, so didn't have to pay anything for it. Uh, but you know, I'd expect us to to be very close to making some announcements about expanding that that uh, portfolio of tenements in the Northern Territory. So, yeah, very much a wait and see. But you know, stay tuned and make sure you don't miss out. Okay. And then someone else is asking me, can you explain at uh, Barakapa what's the difference between kaolin and halosite? Yeah, very much. Uh, kaolin is more of an industrial sort of application, so ceramics and and glass and and things like that. Whereas halosite, like you said earlier, is very much for the electronics and the and you know the potential battery mineral uh, usages, so kaolin's a lot more prevalent. Uh, very uh, the halo site is uh, a more, bit more difficult to find. It is all about the the way that it's weathered and uh, the makeup of the initial geology, which was effectively a granite. So again, the mineralization of that, what's weathered, how it's weathered, um, but it's very much about the application. So a lot of kaolin out there in the in the wheat belt, and you know there's a lot of projects and companies out there mining kaolin. Uh, sure. Halo site's probably a new development. You know, we've seen Andromeda, Latin, um, you know, where, where they've identified these halo site resources and, and ride the market interest there for, for a while there as well. Uh, obviously, we'd love to do that. I think it's probably the heat's come out a little bit of that market given, you know, the wider market conditions. But, you know, again, at the same time, there's not a lot of halo site that's uh, produced around the world. It is a market that we think we can tap into. It's a small market. We're not talking like we're going to be, you know, 90 or 100% or 50% of the market share or anything like that. Again, we'll just small feed into a small market. You know, don't upset or disrupt the market. But you know, the main the main outcome is to to realise uh, revenues and, and production, and off the back of that, cash flows into our business. So whether it's kale and whether it's hello site, uh, we don't mind. But obviously, hello sites are the more uh, more valuable or lucrative material, and that's what we'll be targeting. But at the same time, you know, we'll be looking to exploit the kale as well. Yeah, and it's trading about, I, I don't know if it still is about $5,000 a ton. So very expensive and the price has been moving up. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, it's it's like you said, it's lucrative and, uh, you know, there's not a lot of, well, there's no production in Australia at the moment of halo sites. So, you know, whether it's a first mover type arrangement or, you know, the, like I said, you just got to find the right customers, whether you're first or second to move, as long as you've got the right customers who are prepared to pay you the money, um, you know, and support you. That's really, you know, for us is is the key key point about developing that project. Got it. Okay, does anybody else have any questions at this point? Okay, well, if anyone thinks of anything else, always just email Sean or myself. We'll be sure to, work, to get them over to you, Jerko. Jerko, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your audience and uh, look forward to it and uh, keeping you guys informed. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Great. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching another presentation by 180 Markets. Don't forget, if you want access to thousands of ASX capital raises, head on over to 180markets.com.au, sign up and get on board for our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.